What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G and the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about either phone individually, be sure to check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But without further ado, let's get into it. So with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, we're getting a 6.6 inch 90Hz PLS LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 400, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. With the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, we're getting a 6.4 inch 90Hz Super AMOLED display. This phone also has a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 411, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio as well. So in general, both phones do have really good displays, and no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing stuff like watching videos or maybe just browsing the web using social media, stuff like that, regardless, you will get a great experience with both phones. But at the same time, each phone does have a slight advantage over the other. Now these are more subtle differences, but on one hand, with A14 5G at 6.6 inches, versus again, 6.4 with A33 5G, the A14 is a bit larger. So of course, if you tend to like a larger display, definitely keep this in mind. But on the other hand, with the A33 5G, having a Super AMOLED versus a PLS LCD, while the LCD is definitely not bad at all, the Super AMOLED is going to be a bit brighter, the colors are more vibrant, and the viewing angles are quite a bit better. So if you're outside in the sun, for example, you'll be able to see the A33 5G quite a bit better. But again, at the end of the day, both phones do have really good displays. So if you are looking for an affordable 5G phone that has a really nice display, you're not going to go wrong with either phone. Now for storage, with the A14 5G, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. And with the A33 5G, this phone is getting 128 gigabytes with micro SD card expansion as well. And keep in mind, there is another variant of this phone that has 256. So definitely between the two, if you're looking for a phone that has a ton of storage, the A33 5G will have a huge advantage. But on the other hand, with the A14, for the average user, 64 gigabytes isn't terrible, and as long as you're mindful of what you're putting on your phone, and you make sure to offload stuff like your photos and videos onto a micro SD card, you should be at least okay. But again, if you really do want a lot of storage, if that's really a priority for you, the A33 5G will be a much better choice. For security features, both phones have face unlock, definitely not surprising, pretty much every Samsung Galaxy A series phone does, and they also have fingerprint scanners as well. With the A14 5G, it's on the power key, and with the A33 5G, it's right here in the display. So definitely nice and premium there. But starting with the A14 5G, let's give them a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. And now for the A33 5G. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, both fingerprint scanners were real fast and responsive, no issues at all. And again, remember, both phones have face unlock too. So if you wanna use that instead, you always can. Now for the camera setups here, with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, we got a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. And for video, this phone has a max recording quality of 1080p in both the rear and front cameras. So unfortunately no 4K here, but considering this is more of an affordable phone, I'm not too surprised. With the A33 5G up front, this phone also has a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. Then for video, the A33 5G can actually record 4K videos in both the rear and front cameras, so definitely nice to see here. In general, both phones do have really good camera setups with a pretty good amount of features, but I will say the A33 5G does have the better camera between the two. On one hand, the A14 5G is definitely at least good, but again, there's no ultra wide camera here, and despite the photo quality actually being pretty good for what it is, the A33 5G not only does have an ultra wide camera and the ability to record 4k videos but i feel like it also just takes slightly better photos now the difference is definitely not huge but at the same time if you really want the best camera between the two i would go with the a33 5g but if maybe the camera isn't really a top priority for you and you really just need more of a basic setup they can still take nice pictures when you need it to then in that case the a14 5g will be perfectly fine now to give you an idea of what they can do First, here's some pictures taken with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Overall, again, definitely good quality here. And for the average user, for more typical situations that you're probably going to be using your camera for, it will definitely get the job done. And then here's a couple pictures taken with the A33 5G. And again, between the two, I do think this phone has slightly better quality. Not by a whole lot, but if you're really taking a lot of pictures and that's more of a priority for you, I would definitely go with this phone over the A14 5G. 
Now when it comes to RAM and processor, with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, we're getting 4GB of RAM, and depending on the version you get, you'll either get the MediaTek Dimensity 700 or the Exynos 1330. With the A33 5G, this phone is getting 6GB of RAM with the Samsung Exynos 1280. So in general, both phones do have really good performance, and between the two, the actual difference is really not huge. Neither phone is going to be the fastest phone ever, so if you're on your phone constantly doing more demanding activities like high-performance mobile gaming, you are probably going to want to get something faster, but for more basic basic daily activities that really everyone's going to be doing, either phone will get the job done just fine. But if you really want the absolute fastest phone between the two, the A33 5G will have a slight advantage, although in my experience, I haven't really noticed a significant performance difference between the two. The A33 is maybe a little bit more snappy, but when it comes to real life daily use, you're probably not going to notice a significant difference. And that's definitely impressive for the A14 5G considering, again, this phone is definitely more of an entry level phone, whereas the A33 5G is closer to that mid range level. Now I did run a benchmark test on each phone using Geekbench 6, and here are the results I got. So again, as you can see, there's not really a huge difference between the two, but at the same time, the A33 5G is clearly faster here. So again, if you do want the faster phone between the two, definitely keep this in mind, but at the same time, remember, in real life when you're actually using the phones, the difference is definitely not going to be that huge, so it's not like one's a flagship phone and one is a lowly entry level phone. They are really close to the same level, and for the most part, they're going to have pretty much the same capabilities. Now both phones here have 5000 mAh batteries, with the A4 5G supporting 15 watt fast charging and the A33 5G supporting 25. So the fast charging is really the only difference here. In my experience, the charging speed with the A33 5G, provided you actually do have a 25 watt charger, is going to be noticeably better. But at the same time, the charging speed with the A14 5G is definitely not bad. So in general, if you're not really that concerned about charging, maybe you keep your phone plugged in most of the time anyway, then in that case, this is really not going to matter. But overall, both phones have really good batteries. With 5000 mAh batteries, you can definitely expect to get some great battery life and longevity. So if that is important to you, then you're not going to go wrong with either phone. For the software, both phones do have Android 13, and with Samsung software support, you can also expect to get several other major updates in the future. But keep in mind with the A14 5G being a year newer, this phone of course will get one extra update since it did come with Android 13, whereas the A33 5G originally came with Android 12. But if you're not really planning on keeping your phone for more than three years, this really isn't going to matter. When it comes to other features, both phones do have NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, you'll be happy to know you can do that with either phone. Another thing I do want to point out though, is that with the A14 5G, this phone does actually have a headphone jack, whereas unfortunately, the A33 5G doesn't. So if you have a normal pair of wired headphones you want to use, the A14 5G will have an advantage there. But in conclusion, which of these phones is better? Well, both phones are really good devices that you're honestly not going to go wrong with if you're looking for more of an affordable 5G phone. Between the two, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G does have most of the advantages here. It does have a nicer looking display in my opinion. The Super AMOLED definitely makes a difference. It also has quite a bit more storage, double or even quadruple that of the A14 5G, depending on the variant you get. It does have a noticeably better camera that can record 4K videos, and it does have an ultra wide camera, whereas again, unfortunately, the A14 5G videos do max out at 1080p, and it doesn't have an ultra wide camera. The A33 5G is also a little bit faster, albeit not by much, but if you're going to be on your phone a lot, you will still notice a bit. And although it's not really that much of a difference, the fast charging is better with this phone too. But on the other hand, the A14 5G again is a little bit larger. So if you're doing maybe a lot of reading where you do want a larger display, but you're not really that concerned about the colors being nicer, then this is definitely something to think about. The A14 5G also does have a pretty good camera, so it's definitely not far behind. It also is a year newer, so if you want to keep your phone for the full four years, this phone is going to get Android 14, 15, 16, and 17, whereas the A33 5G is going to get 14, 15, and 16, so if that one update makes a difference to you, then that definitely is worth considering. And again, the A14 5G does have a headphone jack, whereas the A33 5G doesn't. So definitely a few differences here. I feel like if you really want to maximize the features and value you get for the money, I would personally go with the A33 5G, but at the same time, if you do end up with the A14 5G, you're definitely not going to be disappointed either. Now once again, if you want to learn more about either phone individually, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.